The movie and the book Jurassic Park might have been science fiction, but at its core, there was a credible premise. What if you could use the science of DNA to resurrect long extinct creatures that once roamed the Earth? Well, efforts to do just that are actually underway, and one is detailed in the new book, Wooly, the true story of the quest to revive one of history's most iconic extinct creatures. The book is published by Atria Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS, and it comes out next week. It, too, is being made into a movie. We're joined by its author, Ben Mesrick. Ben, good morning. Thank you very much. You've you've written about a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> yes, you have. But you say this is the coolest thing you've ever written Oh, about? this is by far the coolest thing, bringing back the woolly mammoth. Uh, he's going to be back in a few years. We're going to have a woolly mammoth baby, if all goes well. How and this going is, to, How are they doing this? Are well, trying... you know, you're, the woolly mammoths are coming up out of the ice. So the permafrost that is slowly getting warmer, these bodies are coming out and they're taking the genetic material mm -hmm. and then they are uh, synthesizing it and they're placing into, into the cells of an Asian elephant so that an Asian elephant gives birth to a woolly mammoth. So essentially, you're recreating the mammoth using its relative that still exists today. When you say they, right. who is they? I know that um, one of the main figures in the book is Professor George Church. Right. Is so he leading the effort here? Who Dr. Is he? Church, I, I, I idolize him. He is basically the Einstein of our times. He is on the forefront of this revolution going on in genetics, where we've moved from just reading our genes, you know, figuring out what makes us us, to being able to write genes. So he uh, runs a lab at Harvard Medical School. It's a huge lab. It's like Willy Wonka's factory, where they're making transgenic mosquitoes to be malaria and mice to beat Lyme disease and working on reverse aging and then the woolly mammoth project is this really cool project where the goal is like a moonshot to make a woolly mammoth uh, to save the world what do you mean by that save right the well this is what, where it gets is really cool so the the permafrost which is this frozen tundra that's like the ring of the world it's a ticking time bomb it contains within it more carbon than if we burned all the forests on Earth three times. Wow. And these Russian scientists, the Zimovs, have shown since the 80s that if you repopulate it with herbivores from the Pleistocene era, and they're using tanks to mimic woolly mammoths and they're putting bison there, they've managed to lower the temperature of the tundra by uh. 15 degrees. So the goal is to put a herd of woolly mammoths in the Siberian tundra right. to keep the permafrost from melting. Wow. So that's why specifically Specifically, they picked the woolly mammoth. Well, I mean, the woolly mammoth, you know, is, is, is iconic. It's a moonshot project. This same technology can be used to do um, incredible things. But the mammoth itself can actually help the world. It's an outside-of-the-box way. Ben, what does this open problems. the door to if they, pull, right. if they pull this off? Well, you know, the genetic engineering involved is the same genetic engineering that's going to be used to make all sorts of things, you know, mosquitoes to beat malaria, reverse aging, you know, they're working on projects to make our kids' generation live 150 years. It's the same uh, 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 technology that allows us to, to monkey with our own genes. Right. Um, so there's, you know, fears of designer babies, of things like that. But the reality is, this is, there's so many good things that can come from this. I mean, elephants don't get cancer. Yeah. which is very strange. Elephants have thousands and thousands of more cells than us. And why they don't get cancer is in their genes. If we can figure that out, you can use this genetic engineering to solve cancer. Okay, Ben, you, and you say with a wave of the hand, <laughs> designer babies and right. so forth, but gene editing is a fairly controversial thing. Very controversial. I mean, there is a, there is a debate about right. whether this is the ethical path for us Absolutely. as human beings. Uh, you know, nobody hates sure. the woolly mammoth, but the, gene, <laughs> the genetic engineering used to make a woolly mammoth, there are definitely concerns on either side. I mean, the idea of playing God, the idea of, of, of making a mistake, of, of letting something out of the lab, these things come out. And that's why you need responsible scientists. Uh, Dr. George Church is incredibly uh, a good person, and you need people like that doing this, because this, this box is open. Yeah. The Pandora's box of this technology is here. There are labs all over the world, not just making woolly mammoths, but doing things that 10 years from now are going to have huge repercussions. So we want responsible scientists doing this. Remind us of the size of a woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoths are big, you know, they're 15 <laughs> feet high. Their tusks are, are huge. A single tusk is worth a quarter million dollars. They're coming out of the ice now. Um, they're giant, you know, they're about a, a third bigger than an elephant. Um, and they have the red hair, and and um, and uh, but they're 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 loving, wonderful, warm animals. <laughs> we supposedly. look forward to seeing one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The book is cool. the book is Willie Ben Misrick. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you. Ben.